Why, sweetie? Well, look, honey, from the president. Huh? Maybe a command to form the, the president of the United States? Uh -huh. Well, open that up. See what he says. Yeah, let's see it. What is it? What is it? Holy smoke, I'll say it's a command performance. Oh, that's wonderful, Jerry, but what... Good what did look, sweetie. You know I love you, don't oh, you? Thanks. Will you marry me got... tonight? What? Will you marry me tonight? Well, of course. But Wonderful. Not... Congratulations. Starting tomorrow, you're a war bride. Look, I've just been drafted. Goodbye, Mama. Listen to Mama. I owe it to him. He helped us when we came to America. Now I help him. But it was from fights and troubles we ran away. But we didn't start this one, and it's up to us Americans to finish it. Look, Mama, see what it says? I want you for the United States Army. Uncle Sam has his finger on me. Goodbye, Mama. Goodbye. Goodbye, my son, and take care of you. Be a good boy and don't fight. Yes. Mrs. Dibble? Mrs. Dibble? Oh, Mrs. Dimple! Yes, Miss O'Brien. Say, they tell me you're ready leaving for the war. Yes, and the Army's glad they brought him. Well, so am I. Now maybe we can get some sleep around here. Uh, <sighs> time playing that cornet. I know it'll be hard on you, but tell me, aren't you a tiny bit proud? Hey, I don't see what the Army wants with you. You'll never make a good soldier. Well, I can try it for a few months and see how I like it. If I don't like it, I... You what? I can try it a few more months. Well, it all comes from your wanting to march in parades and play in a band. It's, it's all the fault of that darn cornet. Well, it won't be a cornet any longer. From now on, it'll be a bugle. <laughs> Bugler, huh? Now I know the first guy I want to kill in this war. Does that mean we should get up? 5.30? That can't be for us. I didn't leave any call for 5.30. I'm going to roll over and get another 40 winks. Get out of them beds! I want this joint cleaned up before breakfast. Get out of there, you! Up! The CO's going to give this barracks a white glove inspection today. So rise, my little beauties, and start to shine. Ah. Uh. Hello? Hello. Hi. All right, hi. Uh, we're the new fellas. We just got in last night. You slept well? Oh, yeah, sure. You know, this bed's got the softest mattress I ever slept on the floor next to. Say, listen, chum, there's a war waiting for you. But I ain't! Now roll out of them sacks before I bust your ankles at the knees. Now get out of there. You too. Up. All right. You, my little white lily. Up. You too. He's drunk with power, ain't he? Hey, what is this 5.30 business? Left. 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 Platoon. Halt. What is the matter with you, beautiful? Can't you even hear? I'm telling you what foot to lay down. Don't you know your left foot from your right? I know they're both sore, and I wish they were both flat. Shut up! Oh, so the Army don't agree with you, huh? Some ways, I don't agree with the Army. Is it too much of a strain? Wouldn't be if they kept sensible hours like civilians. What did you do as a civilian? Danced. What would you like to do in the Army? Dance. Ford! March! I kept telling them, you don't get no soldiers out of no draft. So help me, Major, when I ask him what he'd like to do in this war, he comes back at me as quick as a flash. Dance, he says, dance, just like that. <laughs> well, Jones was a dancer in civilian life, one of the best, too. Yes, but how am I going to get over to a dope like that so that this here is a war? Sergeant, 
There's a very necessary element in soldiering. It goes by various names, but let's call it morale. Oh, I ain't saying he's a dame chaser, sir. <laughs> no, Sergeant. What I mean is that war is a pretty grim business, and sometimes a song or a smile is just as vital to an army as food. Hmm? Or, sir? Teach your men to fight, naturally, but don't discourage their attempts to entertain one another. As a matter of fact, encourage them. Do you follow me, Sergeant? Uh, yes, sir. Is there anything bothering you, Sergeant? You can speak quite freely, of course. No, sir, only as far as I'm concerned. We just lost this war. What? Mm. Sir. Uh. Don't forget to keep scrubbing the pots while you're singing, and you fellas move in behind them a little sooner. That fiddle session could stand a little rehearsal, too. Well, what do you think, Sarge? Ah, grown up guys putting on a show. Give me a pain in the stomach. Good. I was afraid you might like it. Get those copies made up as fast as you can, will you, man? How's this, Jerry? Oh, that looks fine, fine. But tone it down a little bit, you know. This is still for the Army. And when you finish that, make me a sketch of the kitchen over there just exactly the way it is. I want to use it for the KP hey, number. Jerry. Coming right over. Got a match, Sarge? Yes. Here's piano copies for the two new numbers. Oh, fine, fine. I'll run over those in a couple of minutes. Now, I've got to get something snappy for the opening. That looks great. That looks good enough to walk down Fifth Avenue all alone. No, no, no. Wait a minute, fellas. Wait a minute. You're losing the whole spirit of the thing. Sit down, so I'll show you what I mean. Look, fellas, this isn't a five-mile hike. Pick up the tempo. Raise your feet. Come on, let's try it again. Da, da, da. Time. They'll hit it all right. All right, boys, line up. Don't forget that rehearsal later. No, no, no. Hold it, fellas. Look, point your hands, point your toes. Let's see those big smiles on your faces. That's it. Yes? Could you use me? Well, I don't know. What do you do? I'm the bugler. Bugler? Whoa, whoa. Hold it, man. Hold it. It's no use. They'll find another one. Do you do anything else? I also play the cornet. But not as well as you play the bugle, huh? Even better, perhaps. That seems unbelievable. Bunny. Hand me your cornet a minute. Okay, Jerry. Here, play this for me. Let's hear how it sounds. There you are. Too soon. Are these okay for the minstrel sand? Yeah, they look fine. I'll be with you in a minute. I gotta fix up the finale. God bless America. another number for that spot. What's the matter with the one we're singing? Nothing. It's a swell tune, but it's too slow for the finale. Now, believe me, I know what I'm talking about. I got a number here that'll knock them right out of their seats. Now, I'll sing a first person chorus, and the rest of you join in. Now, here's the setting. There's a big transport, you see, filled right on the stage. You've just got orders. You're going overseas. Everybody's marching with full equipment. You're on your way to France. Go ahead. Hit it. <laughs> Bye-bye, mothers and all the others. 
others will come to shed a little tear. Don't cry, bye bye. Give us a parting cheer. We're on our way. Ooh, and a left flank, hard. There's not a minute to spare. That's why. For when the Yanks advance, you bet we want to be there. Goodbye. Are they reporting, sir? The convoy is standing by. Well, that's fine. Sergeant McGee. Yes, sir. Well, this is it. The trucks are here. We're ready, sir. You instructed your men? Everything is prepared, sir. We've changed the routine of the finale, and the men will march with full field equipment out through the audience to the trucks, sir. Well, that's fine, Sergeant. Lieutenant, take charge of your detail. Yes, sir. Well, this is what you wanted, isn't it? Yes, sir. Goodbye, Sergeant. Best of luck. Thank you, sir. All right, the way the show's going over, it looks like we're really running a year. Brother, we got marching orders. And soldier, you're really going to France. Yep, 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 back, huh, Jerry? Oh, not much. Sometimes it did seem a little noisier backstage. I'm scratching all the names in the show on the bugle. One's kind of hazy. Who is that guy in the fifth row, uh, third from the end? You mean yourself. Oh, yes, of course. Thank you, Sergeant. How could I forget? Eddie Dibble. Dented my bugle. Jerry! Oh, give me a hand.
letters of yip yip yap hang. You know, I got a cousin like you. There's one piece of government property I'd like to see ruined. There's Marty Brennan, dead. The Argon. There's Clark, dead. They're not dead. Not a single one. They'll live forever on this bugle. Hey, Max, Eddie, what are you doing here? Sorry, buddy. Well, a fine bunch of guys you turn out to be leaving me up there in bed with nothing but a pitcher of water. Come on, Max, where's my drink? Coming right up, Jerry. Uh-oh. What happened to the sergeant? Somebody slip a Mickey, I hope. <laughs> I wonder what a guy like the sergeant would do after the war. Me, I go back to my work, but him? He just goes back. <laughs> civilians. <laughs> Even in uniform, they're still civilians. What about you, Jerry? What are you going to do? Oh, don't worry about me. I'll be all right. I'll find some job that a fellow with a game like can handle. But right now, I've got the biggest job of my life. Listen to this, gentlemen. You have just become the father of an eight-pound baby boy. A father? Yeah. Hey, Sarge, huh? wake up. I'm a father. Look. Oh, that's wonderful, Jerry, to have a little one to come home to. My Genevieve died. Genevieve? <laughs> it's his canary bite. <laughs> hey, let's put the baby's name on the bugle. Has it a name? Not yet, but you know what I'm going to call him? What? John J. Pershing Jones. Fine. We'll make him the godson of Yip Yip Yap Hank. A great show. You said it was a great show. Let's drink to it. Here's to a great show. May there never be another one. On this November 11th, the 21st anniversary of the armistice of World War I, this then is the record of those who said they had no more territorial ambitions. Czechoslovakia annihilated, Albania invaded. Is the number you have just heard. And now we take great pleasure in presenting to you the star of our program, Miss Kate Smith. Hello, everybody. It is my happy privilege to introduce a new song, God Bless America.
Right, Pop? Right, son. It kind of makes you think of Blake, doesn't it? Makes you think of a lot of things. We're going to be in this yet, Mom. First time of the year. Brand new, my eye. You know, I threw that song out of Yip Yip Yap Hank 22 years ago. Sounds better now. That's all, Mrs. Nelson. I just wondered if there was anything I could do. No, Johnny. Thanks. He was a great guy. Yes. How's, uh... Dorothy and Blake's baby? Well, naturally, Dorothy is very upset, and she... she feels kind of alone and helpless with... with a baby that Blake never even saw. I asked her to move in here with us, but... Her pride, and I don't know what she's going to do. Must be tough on a young wife, baby. I hadn't thought about it. Call me if there's anything I can do, please. Thanks, Johnny, but Ted is the man of the house now, and he'll look after things. Sure he will. Goodbye. Goodbye. I've got a little business to take care of for Blake. Gee, I hope this is a long war. I want to get in it, too. Johnny Doughboy overseas, filled with pride and joy, stopping everyone he meets and shouting, it's a boy. What does he look like, that boy of mine? Since the news came, I can't get him off my mind. Does he resemble his homely dad? Does he look like the girl that I left behind? Ring on the Germans and ring on the Japs. One for 
life together? Just the right to write me letters. You have that now. I could sign them, Mrs. Johnny J.P. Jones. I practiced. And address them to Private Jones, U.S. Army. Destination unknown. Darling? Darling, where are you? Here, darling. What is it? What's the matter? Oh, it's Danny. Danny's enlisted. Well, that's wonderful. A son who does it the hard way. Where is he? Here. Hiya, Pop. The Navy? Well, Pop, between us, we have the situation well in hand. He does look rather nice, though. Doesn't he? But, Danny, how, how could you? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, hey. four. One, What's going on here? Three, and all the way down, four. here comes the bull of the woods. Hey, our stuff. What's the matter with you, Twardowski? Don't you like our early morning calisthenics? Well, I didn't like them at first. Oh, you didn't like them at first. How do you like them now? I'm still on first. Sarge. Sarge? How'd you get in the Army? Politics. Is that a reason? Look, Sergeant, I got three reasons for being in the Army. First, I'm patriotic. Second, I love my country. And third, they nailed me. And that goes for me, too. Listen, you two birds report to me immediately after this formation. Take him away, Sarge! You and my big mouth. Sergeant McGee. Eddie. Oh, well, I see you're still with your first love. That's exactly right. <laughs> Grown up people coming in here. Yeah, it looks like Sunday at the zoo. Got to hang up a sign saying, please do not feed the soldiers. Did you see your father? Yeah, he's up with the CO getting reacquainted. So is mine. It took another war to get those guys together again. There's a lot of mothers and sweethearts in that mob. And speaking of sweethearts, get a load of that military objective approaching us. Shall I trip her? Hey, take it easy, yard bird. The young lady happens to be a friend of mine. Hello, Johnny. Hello. I didn't expect to see you here. Neither did I. Uh, look, Tommy, uh, why don't you take a ride now? I'll, I'll see you later. OK, maybe I'll pick up an MT. Well, what brings you way up here in the sticks? Well, Dad came out of the old timers reunion, and he insisted that I come along at the last minute. Sit down. Thanks. How do you like my new home? Well, it's big enough. <laughs> well, what do you think of the army by now? Swell. How do you feel about things? I'm more in love with you than ever. I'm more than ever convinced there's a job that has to be done before we can even consider anything else. Johnny, don't you realize that if all men felt like you, there wouldn't be any more families? There wouldn't be any more world. Honey, you're so unreasonable. I'm not unreasonable. We're in a war. And until it's over, our private lives must just stand still. Well, does that mean we're supposed to stop living? Is Johnny Jones private citizen? Yes. I'm Corporal Jones. I don't know how long it'll take to get back to being Johnny Jones private citizen. But until I am, I don't intend to leave anyone on my conscience back home. That's only logic. All right, Johnny, you win. After the war is the time for taking a wife. But you'll have to find a wife first. Well, boys, here we are. I wanted to conduct this little tour personally. This is where Yip Yip Yap Hank was born. Remember? Who could forget, sir? A million years ago, it seems like. Seems like it was only yesterday to me. I was quite a man in those days, I thought. <laughs> you certainly were men to me and my bugle. Well, you know, you didn't do us any favors blowing that thing at half past five every morning. <laughs> Same old spirit after 23 years. 
Well, we're a couple of years older, Colonel, but there's some things about the Army you never forget. <laughs> Very true. That's right. Hey, fellas, look at this. The same old kitchen, just like it used to be. For little me, I'm a KP. I scrub the mess hall on my bended knee. Against my wishes, I wash the dishes too. <laughs> I didn't, didn't remember it then, I don't remember it now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, your voice hasn't improved with age either. <laughs> Say, fellas, look. Here's a list of the old gang. Well, what do you know? I'd forgotten about this. Yip, yip, yap, Hank. The names of all the men in the show. There's Marty Brennan killed in action in the Argon. And this little one here, Peterson, I don't remember him. You remember the gray-eyed kid from Texas opened the grocery store? Oh, yes. He's gone. Hey, there's my name. I put it on when you fellas weren't looking. Remember Dopey Mulligan, who knew he'd get killed? Yes. He's now an undertaker in Des Moines. No. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and there's Johnny Murphy. Remember that skinny little kid used to be dancing all the time? I wonder what ever happened to him. Here I am, and I'm still hoping. <laughs> Johnny, you look like the kid that swiped the watermelon. <laughs> you should see Doc Plosky if you want to get a laugh. He combs his hair with a towel. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed, it was a good show. It was a great show. So were the men in it. That was some war, too, the old war. Yeah, that was the war to end all wars. And now we've got a new one. Well, what are we waiting for? A new war, a new show? I knew it, you, uh, sir. <laughs> well, Jerry, what do you say? Will you help? Sure, I'll help. It'll be something fine for the boys to remember, because I'm afraid there'll be a lot of it that they'll want to forget. Uh, incidentally, Colonel, it just reminded me, I've got a son right here at the camp. has got a little talent. Maybe we can use him. I've got one, too. I've got one, too. Hey, what's the matter with my boy? What about all? us old-timers? We ought to be in it, too. That's it. We ought to do an old-timers number. What do you think, fellas? All right, 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 right. Well, idea. Well, how about it, Murph? Let's go. Murph is ready. I'll tell you what we can do. We'll do the number we did in the last show. Do you remember the old close order drill we used to do with the dance steps? You fellas all line up, you know, just like you did on the stage. And when the band starts to play, I'll step down front and I'll... Well, we'll figure the number out so you fellas can do it without me. I'll be busy anyhow backstage. What do we call it. the show? Yep, 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 bang for second. No, no, Max, that's no good. It's a new war, a new show. We've got to have a new name. Well, why not state the simple fact? This is the army. What do you think, fellas? Great time. Right, right. That's it. This is the army. Corporal Oxford and Private Joe Cook, Jr. Yes, sir. Corporal Oxford. Yes, Sergeant. Private Cook. Yes, Sergeant. Report to Captain Franks. You're going in the Army Relief Show. Sergeant Stone. Coming, Lieutenant. You're going to be in the Army Show. Yes, sir. We'll have this tank right out. What show? It's for Army Emergency Relief. Yes, sir. Corporal Mitchell speaking, sir. Oh, that's great. I mean, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sydney. Hey, Sydney. Yeah? After this run, report to Lieutenant James. Fire advance. Yes, sir. Jaeger. Yes, sir. Anderson. Yes, sir. Report to Captain Bowie. Corporal Truex. Yeah? Report to the CO right after this trip. Corporal Barker. You will be on detached service with the Army Emergency Relief Show. Allen Brothers, report to the orderly room immediately after the firing. Sergeant Joe Lewis, after the bout is over, report to the orderly room. Report to headquarters immediately. Private Christiani, Private Signer. Change to ODs and report to the orderly room. Corporal Perry, report to your company commander. Mindy. 
When you finish with that, report to the orderly room. Private Podolsky, report to the orderly tent. Yes, sir. Pack your equipment. We're leaving for New York to join the Army show. Yes, yes sir. sir. Well, that's all there is to tell you about the show. And I'm quite sure that you're all fully aware that this is for a vitally important cause. As to your conduct in this detail, remember that you're still in the Army. And every theater in which you work becomes an Army post in the strictest sense. You will continue to receive your military training before and after performances. For your military duties, you'll be commanded by Sergeant McGee. In command backstage will be Corporal Jones. Take over, Sergeant. I've had strict orders from the Colonel not to use any profanity today. So I can't tell you what I think about Army shows. <clears throat> Company! Tension! Right face! Forward! March! This sure cooks me up, Brown. I lose my girl with a flag-waving speech about a job to be done before I can marry her. And what's the job? Help and put on a show. Shut up back there! There's one of the nicest guys ever born. That guy wasn't born, he was issued. Did I say shut up or did I? Mother. But I don't see Eileen. Where's Eileen? I wouldn't know. You wouldn't? What do you mean you wouldn't know? You're gonna marry that girl, aren't you? That was my intention. That was your... What's the matter with that son of mine, anyhow? <laughs> hey, come on, hurry up, hurry up. Johnny, Johnny, why aren't these men in their places? Don't they realize... There's plenty of time, Dad. All right, get going. And that Mandy crowd, I'll guarantee half of those fellas haven't got their costumes on yet. I'll guarantee you everything will be ready on schedule. Now, take it easy, Dan. You're trying to take care of every little detail in the whole show. That's too much for one man to do alone. Oh, that's right. I, I guess I have been getting in everyone's hair around. Oh, here. that's not true. You've been swell. Okay, Johnny. I won't say another word. <laughs> I'll see you later. All right, let's go. The curtain's going out. Gray, focus on everything right Private rooms or telephones. You had 
your breakfast in bed before, but you won't have it there anymore. This is the army, Mr. Green. We like the barracks nice and clean. You had a housemaid to clean your floor, but she won't help you out anymore. You watch the buglers come They're in the army and not in a bed. This is the army, Mr. Brown. You and your baby went to town. She had you worried, but this is war, and she won't worry you anymore. This is the army, Mr. Jones. No private rooms or telephones. You had your breakfast in bed before, but you won't have it there anymore. This is the army, Mr. Green. We like the barracks nice and clean. You had a housemaid to clean your floor, but she won't help you out anymore. Oh, need a bunch of selectees. You know, I was a selectee once. <laughs> Tell me, Dick, how do you like the army now? I said, how do you like the army now? It's a military secret. Well, what's the matter with the army? It's a little too feminine. Feminine? Certainly, with all those women auxiliaries, like the AWVS, the Red Cross, the Father Duffy Canteen, the Waves, the Wags, the Woo-Woos, the Wow Wows, and not forgetting the WAACs. Well, that's fine. That shows the women are really patriotic. Oh, maybe so. But when I come home from camp on a three-day pass after slaving all week over a hot gun, <laughs> I'm ready to go. I got a box of flowers on the one arm and a box of candy on the other arm. I run down the street like an idiot, ignoring all the lights. I run into my hotel, run up the elevator, knock on the bell, ring the door, the door opens, and there's my beautiful wife. I look at her, and she looks at me. I look at her, and she looks at me. Well, why don't you kiss her? I can't. She's a first lieutenant. <laughs> Oh, she's a whack. That's beside the point. You know, the worst part of it is I got to get permission from the top sergeant to even talk to her. Well, what's tough about that? The top sergeant's my mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> the top sergeant's my mother-in-law. <laughs> Maybe he hasn't got a mother-in-law. But I'm going to get even. I'm going to take him out on the rifle range and show him how to use a rifle. You're going to show your wife how to shoot a rifle? My mother-in-law, too. Same bullet. Well, you have to be a marksman for that. Really? Now, take me, for instance. I'm one of the best marksmen in the country. What makes you think you're one of the best marksmen in the country? Well, I'll give you an instance. I'd like to hear an instance. The other day I went hunting in the woods. There in front of me I saw a big, beautiful tree. Seated on one limb of the tree were 14 birds. 14 birds? I'll be right back. 14 birds were seated on one limb of the tree. <laughs> he don't care about nothing. He looks like a guy from my draft board. <laughs> Everybody in. <laughs> You heard of the March of Time? There's his brother, Wasted Time. <laughs> I caught you. Ooh, it's alive. Come on, wipe the smile off your face. Come on, get serious. Get serious. Think of your salary. That did it. <laughs> now, what were you saying about the birds? There were 14 birds in one limb. Yeah? I looked at my rifle, I had only one bullet. Oh, my. Now, my objective was to get the 14 birds with the one bullet. Oh, you can't do it. I did it. How? I took my rifle, aimed, fired. The bullet split the limb. The 14 birds got their feet caught in the limb. I walked over, sawed off the limb, put it across my shoulder, walked home with the 14 birds, and it wasn't a good day for hunting that day either. You want to hear some real shooting? Yes. Well, spread out, make it look like a big regiment. 
Last week, I was out in the woods hunting. There in front of me, I saw a big, beautiful deer. I picked up my rifle at him to five, and I heard noise on my right. What do you think it was? What? 500 wild ducks. Well, I didn't want the deer. I wanted those ducks. I picked up my rifle at him to five, and I heard noise on my left. What do you think it was? What? 500 wild geese. I didn't want the deer. I didn't want the ducks. I wanted those geese. I picked up my rifle at him to five, and a snake about five feet long jumped right up in front of me. Boy, I changed my plans completely. I didn't want the deer. I didn't want the ducks. I didn't want the geese. I wanted that snake. I picked up my rifle, aimed, fired. The barrel split in two. One barrel went to the right, killed the 500 ducks. One barrel went to the left, killed the 500 geese. The bullet went straight ahead, shot the deer. The ram out of the gun went down the snake's road, choked him to death. The rebound of the gun hit me in the shoulder. I fell over the river, come up my boots full of fish. I stooped over to take a fish out of my boot, and what do you think happened? What? A button snapped off my coat and killed the rabbit. <laughs> and it wasn't a good day for hunting that day either. <laughs> I'd have killed more, but I was tired that day. <laughs> I, I'll go quietly. <laughs> Corporal Jimmy Burrell, front and center. You're here by order to sing what may very well be every soldier's theme song. I'm getting tired so I can sleep. Out on a hike all day, dear, part of the army grind. Weary and along the way, dear, but really. is your son, Mr. Truax. He's the one in charge of the guard. He's a little bigger than I am, but I don't mind. Corporal Phil Truax, acting sergeant of the new guard, reporting. Your orders are to take charge of this post and all government property in view. Old guard, relieve. Forward, march. Mandy number ready. Lights. I was strolling out one evening by the silvery moon I could hear somebody singing a familiar tune. So I stopped a while to listen, not a word I wanted to miss. It was just somebody serenading, something like this. My Handy, and it sure would be 
number being too old-fashioned. Why, it worked just as well tonight as it did in the old show. Grown-up guys in dame's clothes, if that ain't a sad sack of bananas. Oh, McGee. All right, hurry it up, you fellas. That cue's barking at your heels. Come on, step on it. Speed up. Hey, Johnny, Bennett hasn't shown up for ladies of the chorus. What's the trouble, Johnny? Bennett hasn't shown up. Why, he's the funniest man in the number. You've got somebody to replace him, haven't you? How about Tyrone? Oh, no. Dame's clothes, what must their mothers think? Now, listen, McGee. Opening night is trouble enough without having you around. Sergeant McGee, the stage manager of this troupe, I order you to report to wardrobe for assignment to ladies of the chorus. What? Over my dead body, Corporal of the Guard! <laughs> OK, Sergeant. Let's go, Sergeant. Magician Act. Curtain. <laughs> You prepared for inspection. Attention! Corporal, you're smoking. Yes. Get rid of that cigarette. <coughs> Look at that floor. I've never seen such a mess. Pick up those papers on the double. I'll have you doing KP for the duration for this, Mendes. There won't be enough potatoes in the whole state of Idaho to keep you busy. You're out of uniform. Where's your cap? Put it on. Correctly. One inch over the right eye. Where's your tie? Where's your tie? Look at that blouse. The buttons are gone again. 
Mendes, how many times do I have to tell you? You can't give those things away like fraternity pins. Now you get some buttons on there, quick! Button up! I said but Mendes, you're impossible. The day you become a soldier, I'll be pushing up daisies. Will you pick that thing up? Mendes, you're impossible. Any resemblance between you and a soldier is purely propaganda. You're a disgrace to the army, you, a non-commissioned officer. Well, I've got a good mind to take your stripes back. Mendes, how on earth can you command the respect and attention of another soldier? Lieutenant, Captain, Major, Colonel, General. Men, the basis of military efficiency is teamwork. Strip for action, let's go to work. before us and we've come through triumphantly. And as I led you through these amazing feats, it was a source of encouragement to know that you were behind me, assisting me every moment. Of course, it's doubtful that I could have accomplished all this alone, but it's only by pitching in together that we can build this unwavering tower of strength. And now, as we go on, you go... And now I can't impress upon you too strongly the need for a steady foundation from the general down to the private. Ladies of the chorus, curtain. Sergeant McGee, <laughs> and I thought I knew men. Ladies of the chorus, that's what we are, it appears. We 
were inducted and we took a bow. We joined the army, but look at us now. We're ladies of the chorus. Don't we look lovely, my dears, in corsets and dresses and cute golden dresses to hide the dirt behind our ears. I was a plumber, I quit work last summer, my number come up at the start. I was a printer, I quit work last winter, the yoke hate my lungs and my heart. I was a farmer, potato and bomber, they took me away from the plow. I was a packer, I chewed plug tobacco, I wish I had some of it now. Oh, now we're in the corn. Dressed up in girdles that squeeze, we're here to romance with, to sing and to dance with, a bunch of dirty guys like these. Maiden. That's my son, the fourth from the left. Come closer, won't you please? I'm about to take a squeeze. Very pretty, isn't it? I will give your face a slap. <laughs> yeah. I would love to take you home. He had to mother. join the army to get into show business. <laughs> but I can't. She will treat you like a queen, but I'm only 17. If you're a 17, it's so's my aunt. Woo! My home, I want you to behave. Hi ho, I think you need a shave. Do you think that you can get me into pictures? If you're nice to me, I'll get you on the screen. How about a movie test? Not with hair upon your chest. And now it's time to dance, but keep it clean. Wait a minute. I'm not going to hit a lady. No. What? <laughs> Come on, fellas. Hurry up. You're on next. Well, how's it going, man? Well, great. Well. Mr. Jones, that audience is sure treating us great. Well, you fellas deserve it. I say, that's kind of a nice feeling, isn't it? It sure is. <laughs> Hello, Joe. Nervous? Mr. Jones, I could wear the day I got into uniform. All I know is I'm in Uncle Sam's army, and we on God's side. Well, that's a fine way to feel, and I don't know anyone that could say it better than you, Sergeant. And we're right behind you, Joe. Good luck to you. Good luck. Let's take us on down. Oh, All right, next number on stage. Johnny, that's the music? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Hey, Joe. Rather the zoo, there's a change in fashion that shows. In those Lennox Avenue clothes, Mr. Dude has disappeared with his flashy tie. You'll see in the Harlem Esquire what the well dressed man will desire when he's strutting down the street with his sweetie pie. Sun tan, shade of green, or an olive drab color scheme. That's what the well dressed man in Harlem will wear. Dressed up in ODs with a tin hat for overseas. That's what the well dressed man in Harlem will wear. Top hat, white tie, and tails no more. They've been put away till after the war. 
want to know? Take a look at Brown Bomber Joe. That's what the well just man in hollow will wear. Heard from where we sat. Now, how about a cheer for the Navy? 
the army's great, the army's tough, but don't you think we've heard enough? So how about a cheer for the Navy? We know that Mr. Stinson is solid as the rocks, but how about an orchid for Secretary Knox? The army may be in the groove, but Walter Winchell won't approve unless you give a cheer for the Navy. Hip, hip, hooray, we haven't got long to stay, so how about one bouquet for the Navy? All set for the stage door canteen number, props and everything? Yeah, I think so. This just came for you. All right, get on stage, you primadonnas. Let's go. Get on for stage door canteen. Hey, fellas, get a load of this wire. Anybody I know, John? <laughs> We're going on tour. What do you know, Boston, Philadelphia, Washington? Washington? Hey, wouldn't it be something if the president came to see us? The chief himself. Yeah, wouldn't it be something if we could get this makeup off our kisses before the war's over? You <laughs>
something. Hello, at least. Hello. Hello. This uniform. Red Cross Auxiliary. I'm helping out back home in my spare time. Did you come to see the show? Oh, to see Dad and the President. And you. Me? I've missed you a lot, Johnny. I tried to convince myself you're not worth bothering about. I just haven't got the willpower, I guess. I've missed you, too. Plenty. Thanks. Eileen, there's something I'd like to explain. About our marriage? Yes. I guess there are a million guys thinking of the same thing. What to do about their girl back home. Well, it was when I went to see Mrs. Nelson, just before I enlisted. You remember when Blake was killed at Pearl Harbor? I know. But what has that got to do with us? Well, she was telling me about Blake's widow, Dorothy. Just a kid, but a widow with a baby. Lonely and sort of helpless. With so much pride, she wouldn't impose on anyone. You'd be like that, Eileen. That's no future for you. But, darling, you weren't killed at Pearl Harbor. Besides, how could I be a widow with a baby if we don't get married? Well, that's just why we don't get married until this war is over. Corporal Jones, I'm waiting for you. Coming. You understand, don't you? Don't you? Will I see you after the show? I don't know. Please, say you'll meet me right here. Johnny! You better hurry. All right, men. You know who's going to be out in front tonight? Our boss, the President of the United States. Now, you guys are giving a lot of great shows, but tonight's got to be the best one of all. All right, Sergeant. Hey, Johnny, look, there's the president and General Marshall and the secretary of state. He looks in the newsreels. Hey, fellas, the president. Gee, I'd like to go out and thank him for that raise he gave us. Canteen number. Occasion, so be especially bright. 
The cast of This is the Army will be our guest tonight. They must have fun, but don't be fools. It must be done according to the rules. You must be ladies. Don't worry, Miss Town. Merrily we appear on the scene. Hostesses of the stage door canteen. Entertaining soldiers who are going off to war. Glad to be of service, but we could do much more. We could do more for the boys. And greatly add to their joys. But we don't get very far. The rules and regulations are we mustn't be seen outside the canteen with a soldier. They each could do with a gal. Would greatly help them around. But we simply must resist. We take an oath when we enlist to never be found canoodling around with a soldier. No. Oh. Really? Oh, you bearer of great news. <laughs> Where out there? This passes anything I'd hoped for. Boys, you'll never guess. It's Lynn Fontaine. <laughs> ah. <laughs> what a lovely group of soldier boys we have here tonight. Now I must do something for you. But what can I do? I have no talent for dancing uh, or singing. But I have got Alfred. <laughs> Where is Alfred? Alfred who? Alfred Fontaine. Uh, Alfred Lunt. Alfred. Alfred! Where are they? Where are they? Oh. I thought it was Abbott and Costello. <clears throat> Alfred, I want you to get out of that kitchen and help me entertain these men. Lynn, darling, I experience a rarer ecstasy in that kitchen than I have ever experienced on any stage. And when 8 o'clock comes, instead of the stage manager knocking on the dressing room door and calling 15 minutes, Mr. Lunt, Ethel Barrymore says, Hamburgers! <laughs> Hamburgers! <laughs> Hamburgers. And I asked Charles Boyer how he'd like to have hamburgers. And Charles Boyer says, I adore them. They remind me of the Casbah, of Paris, and Pink Champagne. Next week, I'll be back at the same time with Hedge Lamar. And I hope you'll receive her with her usual discriminating kindness. So until then, au revoir. And I ask Herbert Marshall how he likes hamburgers. And Herbert Marshall says, many people ask my opinion of hamburgers. Ladies and gentlemen, it's more than an opinion, it's an adoration. But hamburgers throw themselves away in this frantic desperation to do something. And in the end, does anyone love hamburgers? Do they love anyone? No. But do I love them? Why, you silly little things of of course, I love them. What a question. <laughs> Old Mr. Absent Minded, that's me. Just as forgetful as I can be. I've got the strangest sort of a mind. I'm always leaving something behind. But at the stage
Hold on. I, I gotta get off. I gotta. What is it now? I'm having a baby. Right this minute, I'm having a baby. A baby? They just told me. I thought my wife was in the theater, but she's in the hospital. I gotta go. All right, now calm down, calm down. It's all right. Go ahead and have your baby. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Jones. But don't forget to take off that costume. Yeah, the kid won't know which one's his mother. <laughs> Hello, fellas. Oh, Hello, Jerry. Jerry. Hello. That's it. Let's go, My boys. My golly, what a lucky bunch of stiffs you are to be in on a command performance. Don't we know it? Now, listen, if anybody misses a cue or gets off the beat out there tonight, I'll strangle them personally, do you understand? Sure, Jerry, we won't let you down. I know you won't, Max. You should see the crowd out there, every big shot in town. And tonight, I'm going to take a look at the number from the front myself. I want to see how the boss likes it. Well, good luck to you all, and put the number over as you never put it over before. Good luck. Okay. Good luck. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. What he wouldn't give to be in this number tonight. You bet. Say, fellas, wait a minute. Air Corps number, curtain. Hello, darling. Hello. Well, how's it going? Oh, wonderful. Jerry, I'm worried about Arlene. She hasn't come in yet. Huh? Oh, don't worry about those kids. She'll turn up. Hey, Mom, got some news for you. After tonight, you're gonna get your old man home again for good. Is the show closing? The boys don't know it yet, but this is the last performance. What are you bawling about, Mom? I'm awfully glad to see you, lady. Oh, Ted, I, I want to tell you something quickly while I still have the courage. Something wrong? No, it's... I just want you to know it's all right. I, I mean, about, about the army. I was wrong before. This, this is what I raised you for. To be a credit to your country and to yourself. Thanks, lady. And so, don't worry anymore, son. Just, just take care of yourself, if you can. And Ted. Yes? Give it to them. Don't you worry, Mom. Ladies and gentlemen, we take you back 25 years to another war, another soldier show. We present an original scene from Yip Yip Yap Hank with Irving Berlin. the great musical comedy star, one of the original members of this number in 1917. Sergeant Jones, take over. Tension. Riano. Here. Burns. Right. Clemens. Here. Benzer. Yeah. Berlin. Berlin. At ease, men. That's the second time this week Berlin has failed to show up. Corporal, you go and find him. Tell him if he doesn't report to me in five minutes, I'll turn him into the lieutenant. Okay. Tension. Right. Fritz. March. Backward. March. As you were. At ease. Tension. In cadence. Exercise. 
exercise. Corporal, I just spoke to Berlin and he said, see if the army couldn't get along without him this morning. Oh, he did, did he? Take over, Corporal. I'll take charge of Berlin. Lift face! Forward! Hey! Come on, come on. It's time to get up. Come on, sleeping beauty. Wake up! You gotta get up, you gotta get up, you gotta get up this morning. been a soldier quite a while and I would like to state the life is simply wonderful the army food is great I sleep with 97 others in a wooden hut I love them all they all love me it's very lovely but oh how I hate to get up in the morning oh how I'd love to remain in bed for the hardest blow of all is to hear the bugler call. You gotta get up, you gotta get up, you gotta get up this morning. Someday I'm going to murder the bugler. Someday they're going to find him dead. I'll amputate his reveille and step upon it heavily and spend the rest of my life in bed. Oh, how I hate to get up in the morning. Oh, how I love to remain in bed. For the hardest blow of all is to hear the bugle call. You gotta get up, you gotta get up, you gotta get up this morning. Someday I'm going to murder the bugle. Someday you're going to find him dead. And then I'll get that other pup. The guy who wakes the bugler up and spends the rest of my life in bed. Oh, how I hate to get up in the morning. Hey, uh, Corporal, there's an attractive young lady waiting for you outside. This is a free United States. Doggone it, if we want to get married, let's get married. <laughs> Could you cut it a little short, sir? I'm in the next number. Well, rationing is the order of the day. We'll need witnesses. Oh, hey, Frank, will you get my father? Sure. Mine, too. Okay. Forgive me, honey. You ought to be ashamed. I even had to buy the ring. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. To love and to cherish until death do us part. To love and to cherish until death do us part. To love and to cherish until death do us part.
Ladies and gentlemen, it is with regret and pride that I make this announcement to you, to the members of the cast, and to their families. This is the final performance of your soldier show. In a few minutes, when the curtain comes down for the last time, the men will be ordered back to their combat units. Men, you have done a great job for a great cause. <laughs> It was not so long ago we sailed to meet the foe and thought our fighting days were done. We thought it was over then, but now we're in again. Ooh, 